Let's see what our bead's doing this hole. See if we can get a bead biter in there. Let's say maybe. Yup, there's one. First cast with the bead. Oh! -hoo -hoo -hoo! First cast with the bead. <laughs> Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode this week. In this week's video, we're gonna show you how to float fish for steelhead. Now, we're gonna break down two different setups and styles of float fishing and explain when and where we like to use each one. And if you're new to our channel, feel free to subscribe. And also drop a comment below if you have any questions on the video and we'll get back to you. So now come along with us and we're gonna break down our setups. Now, when you're choosing a good rod, for steelhead fishing and if you're just starting out a lamb glass red line is something I use all the time and it's a great rod to start with you know you can get something smaller like a nine foot four or you can move up to something like a 12 foot six you know which is gonna be perfect for a big river and you can you know when you're choosing the right pound test the line rating for a rod you want to choose something from about six pound to 15 pound rating somewhere in that range you know because a lot most of the times when we're running leaders for steelhead we're gonna be running anywhere from six to ten pound in that range and that's just a perfect rating so guys I also wanted to talk about which reel to get to go with your rod so I would recommend getting a Fluger President reel I've always used these reels they work great for me for fishing for both steelhead and salmon they're very durable and they're a great reel to start with now I'd recommend getting the size 35 that'll hold a good amount of line and it'll work great for you for float fishing on the streams and now I'm going to talk about how to choose a good main line to start with. So when you're float fishing, you're going to start with a good heavy main line, and then you're going to run a leader. We're going to show you how to set that up, but you're going to want to spool a good main line on your reel. Now when, what I like to run is just a simple monofilament. And it, this is Trilene XL Smoothcast. It has always been a great line for me. I've been running it guiding for many years now and it's always worked well for me. Now I like to run mono here in the Great Lakes because mono works better when it gets cold, cold temperatures. Braid obviously floats and it floats better and it's easier to float with. But when you get those cold mornings and cold temperatures, you know, below freezing, braid will freeze up more. But this mono will run really well when it's cold. And also here in the Great Lakes, we run a lot of light leaders, say, you know, six, eight pound tests. Sometimes some guys even like to run four pound tests. So when you run a mono main line, how a mono stretches, mono has more stretch in the line. And when you run those light leaders and the fish are moving fast, it's gonna give and it's gonna provide you with more cushion when those fish are making fast runs and you'll land more fish. Guys, when you're spooling up line, a fresh spool of line on a reel, there's a couple tricks you can do to prevent line twists. You can spool up the line in hot water. So place your spool line in a pan or a bucket of hot water and spool it onto your reel. And you can also stretch it out in a parking lot by tying it onto something on an object like your truck hitch and stretching it out by about 50 to 100 yards and pulling the line till it's at almost at its breaking point. You'll feel the mono stretch and you'll feel the stretch in the line come out and just simply hold it at a tight tension for about 10 seconds or so and that those two methods will help out tremendously. So now I'm going to talk about choosing a good leader line. Now there are all different kinds of leader lines out there but I like to use a fluorocarbon leader. And my preferred brand of fluorocarbon is Seaguar Red Label. I've always run Red Label and it runs great with Trilene as a main line. So, eight pound Seaguar Red Label is a great is a great pound test to run with 12 pound mainline. Now you can run also 10 pound with 12 pound mainline, but you may lose a few more floats because your float's gonna be on your mainline. Now the whole idea of putting a leader below your barrel swivel, and I'm gonna show you how to set this all up, is that your leader will break first before your mainline so you won't lose floats and you'll lose less gear into the river when you snag up. So, we're gonna put our mainline on first here guys. I'm gonna show you how to put the, put the bobber on the mainline and we're gonna break down the rig. 
Okay guys, so the first setup we're gonna break down and show you how to rig up is what's called a shot pattern float fishing rig. So what that is, is a float fishing rig from your bobber to your hook that has staggered split shots spread out by about six to eight inches all the way from your bobber to your hook. Now let me show you the materials you're gonna need for this rig. What we're gonna set up here is an 11 gram Raven Fast and Deep float. Now this float will work well all, all over the board. You know, you can use this float in a big river, you can use it in a small river, slow water, deep water, you know, this is a good, my favorite all around float. Now if you really wanted to, you could switch up the size of the bobbers, I like to, and run a 20 gram float on a bigger river system like the Manistee or Muskegon, or you could downsize to an 8 gram on a smaller tributary, but an 11 gram float will get you by in both a small tributary and a large tributary. So, what also we have here is Raven 1 16th inch tubing, Raven Tackle 1 16th inch tubing, and that's going to hold our float on the main line here. Okay, we have a Raven extra small barrel swivel, black barrel swivel, and for hook, we're running a Raven specialist hook. This is a size four Raven specialist hook. Now we also have some split shot here. Now we have a few size five round split shots. These bigger ones are size five round split shots, and we have a couple rounds, couple size seven split shots, and we have one little BB shot here. Now this is one little BB shot, okay? Now we're going to start off putting these bigger split shot closer to our float and as we move down towards our hook we're going to slowly tape our split shot so it gets smaller all the way down to where the small BB shot's just above our hook here. So let's get started. Okay so the first step here guys is we're going to put our float on our main line here. So I'm just going to simply add this tubing to my main line. This line, your main line is just going to slide right through this tubing. So put all three pieces of tubing on your main line. Okay, now I'm going to add my float onto my tubing here. So I'm going to put one piece of tubing on top of the float and two on bottom of the float, on the bottom of the float. So I got my first on the top stem. Now I'm going to put my second piece all the way up the stem towards my float. Now I'm going to put the third just onto my float. Okay, now this float's going to slide on your main line. To adjust your float and set deeper and shallower in a hole, all you have to do is hold your line and slide your bobber. But a good tip is to always wet your main line before you slide your bobber. Because if you just slide your bobber without wetting it, it's going to create friction which will fray your main line. Now it's really important to keep a good, healthy, strong main line because when you get snagged, you want your leader to break first and you're, you want your main line to be strong so you get your float and gear back, most of your gear back. So now we're going to add our barrel swivel here. We're just going to tie a simple clinch knot here, guys. Fisherman's knot, whatever you'd like to call it. You don't have to tie anything fancy here. Okay, so we're going to tie on our small black barrel swivel. Now you can go up in a little bit bigger size too for a barrel swivel, but I like the Raven extra small barrel swivels just to keep the gear small and stealthy. And uh, okay, we're just going to tie the fisherman's knot or a clinch knot. Again, always wet your knots. Trim it up there. Okay, now we have our float on. And now next we're going to add our leader line. So I'm just going to take about an 18 inch piece of our leader line here. Trim it off and I'm going to connect it to our barrel symbol. And I'm just going to tie the simple clinch or fisherman's knot as well. That's the only knot I'll tie for, you know, tying line to hook or line to swivel. You know, sometimes I'll use a polymer knot in some scenarios, but for this all you have to use is a clinch knot or a fisherman's knot. Works very well. Okay. Now we got our leader line tied. And now we're going to add our hook. So, we're going to add our hook here. And uh, we're going to set this up for float in a spawn bag. But you could also put a bead on this rig and run a bead just the same. It'll work just as well. So, when we, when we rig up our next float fishing setup, we're going to do that with the bead. Just so you can see how to peg a bead on your line. But you can also use it with a spawn bag. So, tying our hook on. Same thing, clinch knot. Fisherman's knot. Okay. Now we're going to add our split shot. Okay. Grab our pair of pliers here. Don't want to use your teeth. I've seen a lot of teeth get chipped with biting split shot. So we're going to add our BB shot first, close to our hook here. We're going to dig out our BB shot. Okay. So we have our small little BB shot here. 
and we're gonna put him just about eight inches above our hook. Now with the spawn bag, I like to put my last weight, which is my BB shot, eight inches above my hook because the spawn bag's a little more buoyant than say a bead. So the spawn bag's gonna kind of float up a little bit more. So I like to run the weight a little closer to my spawn bag. Now if I was running a bead, I'd space my last weight out just a little bit farther, maybe about even 15, 18, 15 inches or so for my bead because the bead's gonna sink more, a hard bead will. Now if you're running a soft bead, I would like to you know, keep my weight closer to my hook or closer to my bead. But anyways, we're gonna clip our split shot on here. Now when you're crimping these split shot on here, you don't wanna crimp too tight because I've frayed my line many times doing crimping them too tight. You just wanna crimp them on nice and snug. Just so it closes, give it a good, nice, snug little pinch, and that's perfect. You don't wanna really force anything here. Okay, so now we're gonna add our size seven round split shot. We're just gonna put one of these on our leader. Okay, we're gonna crimp him in between our BB shot and our little barrel swivel here. So that way we have two shot on our leader, and now when you break off, this will be all you're losing. You're just losing your bottom end of your leader and your hook. So you're not gonna be losing, you know, your float, the majority of your split shot. So that way it just saves a lot of the gear you're losing into the river. So now we're gonna add split shot onto our main line here. So I'm gonna take one size seven split shot and put it right at my swivel here. Now we're running an 11 gram float, so this is gonna be in the ballpark of how much weight you need for an 11 gram float. Okay, we're gonna add one size seven right on our swivel, then about six inches above that, we're gonna start adding our bigger shot, which is our size five. So about six inches above that, we're gonna crimp on a size five. Another six inches, we're gonna put another one. And you know guys, if you're not set deep enough for all the shot, you can even slide your shot around here. So you can move these split shot around here. Also, I would recommend wetting your line before you do this. Um, but I'm just doing it as an example right now. You can stack these shots up, you know, if you need to go shallower. Um, you know, you can put two together, three together, doesn't matter. I always like to keep it somewhat somewhat even though, so like three, two, one, or something like that. And also guys, this might not be the exact weight amount. To be honest, I'm always adjusting anyways. Um, you know, you don't have to use these exact size split shot either, just somewhere in the ballpark, but I'm always adjusting. I'm always setting different, you know, adding weight, taking a little weight off, finding the perfect medium, just depending on where I'm fishing because the conditions, currents, and rivers are always changing. You just want to make sure you have enough weight that your float's sitting right about at that white line in the water. You don't want any of this black part sitting above the water when you're floating. So make sure this white line's right even with the water. And I even like to put enough weight on so the bobber's just barely sitting above the water so I can just barely see it. That way as soon as you get bit, as soon as something nips it, you're gonna know. Especially when they get finicky, that can make a difference here. So yeah, you just wanna, it's a little, steel heading's a little game of details. Just, you're always adjusting and that's what it is. You just wanna make sure your bobber's floating at about that white line. So that's how to set up a shot pattern setup, guys. Now, when I run a shot pattern setup, I like to use them in deep, swift currents, you know, deep, swift, long runs, anywhere where the top of the water is nice and stable and moving nice and stable. Now, when I'm fishing fast water where there's ripples on top of the water or boils, swirls, you know, gravel pockets, real fast water, that's where I'm gonna run the bulk shot setup, which we're gonna show you next. But when I run a shot pattern, I like to use it in slow, deep holes, nice, swift current, anywhere where, you know, nice, bubble lines through holes, that's where I like to run a shot pattern. Okay guys, so now we're gonna show you how to set up a bulk shot float fishing setup. So what that means is you have your float at, on your main line, and then you're gonna have a section of free line all the way down to all your weights, a heavy weight near your hook, probably about 15 to 18 inches from your hook. Now by having this set up like this, as soon as you get into a hole, your weight's gonna shoot right down quick. It's gonna free fall with all that slack line and get right down into a hole fast. So this is good to use anywhere where the water's fast and like rapidly riffly water, where it's boiling, swirling in like gravel pockets, where the surface current's broken up. And this is gonna help you get down quick into the holes. Now I also like to use this in short deep holes. So say if you have only like a 15 foot hole back to a log or something that's eight, nine feet deep, by running your bulk shot weight like this, it's gonna shoot your bait right down into the strike zone where those fish are at, and you're gonna get down quick into that strike zone. Whereas if you were to run a shot pattern through that hole, you know, your float might be halfway through that hole before your bait's down in the strike zone. So with this bulk shot, it's gonna get you right down and fishing right away. So we're gonna do just like we did before. We're gonna add our tubing onto our main line here. 
Now we're gonna add our little small uh, barrel swivel here. Same thing like before. A Raven extra small barrel swivel. Okay. Now we're gonna run bigger split shot for our bulk shot. And we're only gonna run a couple of them. So we have an, a Raven 11 gram on here. So we're gonna run about, I'd say two size number two round split shot. So I, I like to run size one, two, and three round split shot when I bulk shot. Cause they're bigger shot and you don't need all the shot on there for your shot pattern. So let me, let me grab a couple out here for you guys. Okay, so we have a couple size two round split shot, these bigger, these bigger split shot here. And we're gonna crimp them on. And just like before guys, I'm always adjusting and it could be, I might be off a little bit with how much weight this is, but you always wanna keep adjusting. You know, every, every word conditions change. So you always wanna keep adjusting. If you notice you need a little more weight on and you have some of the black parts of this float showing, then add just a little more weight, you know? And if you notice that you have too much weight on, then take a little bit off. And you can even put, you don't have to get too fancy with this shot here. You can even put a size five or seven on if you need just a little more weight. You know, you can narrow it down. But I usually just like to run, you know, a couple bigger shot just because it's easier. And once you find the right pattern and right system, you're gonna, you're gonna be in. You're gonna, you're gonna know. So I'm gonna crimp these on again, not too tight. And then we're gonna tie our leader on here. So, we're gonna rig this one up with the bead, but you can also run a spawn bag with this and vice versa with our last setup. It's the same setup here. So we're gonna tie our leader on, and we're just gonna cut off about an 18 inch piece of our leader line here, okay? Now we're gonna tie this onto our swivel. Now we're gonna keep it short you might even go 15 inches, we'll see. You don't have to get too exact with it, but I don't like it too long. You know, I like it at about that 15 to 18 inch range. Just because that way your bait's gonna be closer to your um, main shot and it's gonna be getting down quick into the hole, which is the goal with bulk shotting. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go about 18 inches there. Right about there is perfect. Okay, now we're gonna add our hook on here. We're gonna run a size four Raven specialist hook with a 10 millimeter bead. Now let me show you a few beads I like as well. So these beads here are Great Lakes Steelhead Company beads. These three different colors work well all across the Great Lakes. Now each river a different size and color is gonna work a little bit better, and, but these three colors work well about everywhere. Now we have Muskegon Madness, which is the yellowish chartreuse. We have Fireball, which is the pink, and we have UV Super Orange, which is the orange. Now, like I said, these colors work well everywhere and they're Great Lakes Steelhead Company beads. So check them out, they work very well. So now we're gonna add our bead on our leader line here. And we're gonna be running a fireball here out here today. And so we're gonna run our bead onto our main line here. Okay, and now we're just gonna tie our size four Raven Specialist hook. Like I said, you wanna run a size four Raven Specialist hook with, your, with a 10 millimeter bead. Now, if you try to downsize and go to a six, you will lose a lot of fish. I've tried it and you will lose a lot of fish. So you wanna run a size four with a 10 millimeter bead. Now, if you run an eight millimeter bead, you can get away with a size six hook, but a size four works well with an eight millimeter, or an eight millimeter bead as well. So size four Raven Specialist hook is a good all around hook here. Now on my hook, I'm just gonna tie a regular clinch knot, fisherman's knot here. Now some people like to snell their hooks, but with this, I just like to run a regular clinch knot. If I was running more of an octopus shaped hook, you know, egg hook, I might snell it, but this hook works really well with just a regular clinch knot. Okay, now with the bead, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my bead peg on and I'm not gonna run any shot on my leader for this. Now if I was running a spawn bag, I might put one size seven shot halfway in between my hook and my weights but with just my bead i'm not going to run any leader because the bead's going to tumble more and a bead's going to sink more in a spawn bag well so i'm just going to put on my bead peg here i'm going to sink it through and you want to just slide your slide your bead peg on until it's nice and snug where that bead you know it's not moving too fast and most of the time you can even use the same peg twice you know you can kind of once you get the hang of it you know slide it up where you can use the same peg for two different beads I'm just gonna trim it there. Okay, now, guys, you will lose a lot of your fish if you put your bead right on top of your hook like this. 
If you put your bead right on top of your hook and fish it like that, you will lose a lot of your fish. It's something about with that sharp bead, with that bead right on top of your hook and that hard bead, you will lose a lot. So you want to space your bead out just a little bit above your hook. What I like to do is go about just about three, two or three finger lengths from your bead to your hook is a perfect medium. So that's perfect right there. You know, you have it just, just up off your hook there, and you're going to hook them well in the mouth every single time. So guys, when you fish a bulk shot float fishing setup, you want to fish it in areas where the top of the water is broken. Um, like say you're fishing riffly, fast, rapidy water, and also say you're fishing it in short, deep holes, or anywhere where the top of the water is broken, like I said, like where it's swirly, kind of gravel pockets, because with the bulk shot, you want to hold back on it a little bit most of the time. So what's going to happen is when you're fishing in these water, like you see in this float, like you see in this clip here, the top of the water is really fast, but the hole is deep. So if I just let my bobber ride nice and smooth, the, the top of the current so fast, it's gonna pull my float faster than what my bait's running. So when it looks like that, you wanna slow it down just a little bit. Now you can see in this clip here how it's done right. The, you know, I'm holding back on it just a little bit. I'm not holding back on it too much where my float's moving, but I'm holding back on it just enough where the bobber's sitting up vertical and it's leaning back just a little bit. Now, if you're floating and you notice your bobber's riding nice and ver vertical, then there's no reason to correct it. But if you notice that the bobber's leaning downstream and it, you're not hitting bottom, then you will want to hold back on it just a little bit. Now, you might ask, you know, well, doesn't it mean I'm on the bottom if my float's leaning downstream? Many times, yes. But you will know that you're not on the bottom when your float's leaning downstream, floating through the hole, and not constantly going down. Once your float's constantly going under the water and you're feeling it snag up, that's how you know you're on the bottom. Then simply shut just a little bit shallower, inches at a time, until you're at the perfect depth. So another thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is how deep to fish each hole. Now you might be asking, you know, how, how do I know how deep to set and how deep to fish a hole? Well, it always changes depending on how deep a hole, how deep the hole you're fishing is. Each hole is going to be a little bit different. So what you want to do is always set, start setting shallow in a hole. So set shallower than what you think the hole is. And you want your bobber to ride nice and vertical. Then gradually go a little deeper, about six to eight inches at a time, until your bobber's riding, so until it's trotting and constantly going down like you see in this clip here. We're showing you this clip here to give you a good example. You can see the bobber's leaning downstream and it's constantly trotting, bouncing up and down. And I got a nice tight line to my bobber, so it's not the line causing that, it's obviously the bottom. You can see the bobber's pulling down, it's constantly going down, snagging up, and that's how you know you're on the bottom. Now once I find the bottom in a hole, I'm gonna start setting a little bit shallower, about six to eight inches at a time, until my float is riding nice and smooth and vertical through the hole, like you see in this clip here. This is how you want your bobber. You want it riding nice and smooth and vertical through this hole. Now this is just a nice smooth deep hole where you can see the top current stable, so we're fishing a shot pattern right here, and this is perfect. That float's riding nice and vertical, it's great, getting a great presentation down to those fish, and that's what you want. So guys, these are my two favorite float fishing styles and setups. Now, although I explain when and where I like to use each one, each setup will work in all conditions, so don't get me wrong there. Now, one thing I can say is, even if you think it's bottom, as you're setting shallower and deeper through a hole, make sure to set the hook. As you can see in this clip here, I, th I was just drifting and I did not think it was a fish. I was just drifting simply to get a good shot to show you guys and I had a fish on. So this is a perfect example to set the hook on everything even if you think it's bottom. Well guys, <laughs> I was just trying to show you the float fishing set up here and we got a fish on. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Maggie was just trying to get a shot of what the bo a close up shot of what the bobber looks like and this thing bit right at her feet out here. You can see <laughs> in the clip, I had that bobber down just a second ago when I was showing you my, trying to show you the crack of the bobber. And I guess it was a fish. <laughs> just a So guys, now we're going to show you some basic techniques on how to get a nice, natural, smooth presentation while drifting through a hole, which is very important while float fishing. You want your bobber riding vertical, which is straight up and down, and smooth as possible through a hole from start to finish. That's going to bring you the best success. So when you're casting these long rods, even a 9 to 
10, 11, 13 foot rod, you want to just do kind of a swing cast because with these long rods, they're really going to whip your stuff out there. And most of the time, you know, you'll have anywhere from a three to eight, nine foot leader from your float to your bait. So with that being said, what I like to do is reel up so my float's about two feet away from the top of my rod. That way, I'm keeping my rod up high and I'm just gonna do a nice swing. I'm gonna let my whole line and my float carry my cast out. So I'm gonna bring it to the side here. I'm gonna bring it back. And with these long rods and all this weight and bobber on there, your cast is gonna fly out. It does not take a lot of effort. You don't have to throw out far. In fact, if you throw out hard and really cast it like a lure, then you're gonna end up tangling a lot of your weights and your lines and you're gonna have a headache. So just keep your rod up high, bring it back behind you and just give it a nice swing. Keep it up high, point where you want it to go and lay it out there, okay? Now when you first get it out there, you want to keep your rod tip at a little bit of an upstream angle. That's going to help control your line. It's going to help keep your line just up above your upstream of your bobber and it'll help you get a good hook set. Now, as my float's floating down, I'm watching my line. I got a nice tight line to my bobber. You know, my bobber's ride nice and smooth. I don't have too much slack line out, which is perfect. But now, as my bobber starts to float away from me downstream, what will happen is, is they'll start to develop a bow in the slack line. So the current, as my bobber gets farther away from me, the current will start taking the slack line out and it'll start pulling it and it'll develop a big bow. So say my rod's here, my bobber's here, there'll be a big bow in the slack line. So when that happens, you wanna do something called mend the line. Now I like to mend the line right away through my drift. And I like to periodically mend the line all the way through my drift, every five or 10 seconds. Anytime my line starts to drift ahead of my bobber. When that happens, what's gonna happen is that line's gonna pull your float, which will make for an unnatural presentation, and it's also gonna make it harder to get a good hook set with more line out. So, let me show you a little bit how I like to do that here. So when I first cast out here, okay, I'm gonna do a big high half circle with the bail closed. You can't do it with the bail open because the whole goal is to pull your line, not give it line. So I'm gonna do a big high half circle and I'm gonna lay it upstream of my bobber. I'm gonna reel down a little bit. I got my rod up high, you know, just at about a 45, 50 degree angle. Now I'm gonna mend the line again. So I'm picking the line up. You'll see the line pick up all the way you, you'll pick it up off the water and you want to pick it up till it pulls the float just a little bit and lay it back up off the water. Now the goal is, is to not move the float too much, but you're going to move it a little bit and that's okay. You just want to help control that line. So check it out here. Just a nice swing cast, nice easy cast. Like I said, don't have to throw it out. Keep that rod at a little bit of an upstream angle and just do a big high half circle. You know, reach up to the stars. You wanna see that line pick up off the water all the way to the bobber and lay it, take your rod and lay it back upstream of your bobber. And that's gonna help you control your drift as you drift down through holes. Now, it can be a little tricky with a spinning reel to control your line. So what I mean by that is it can be tricky to control your line so you don't have too much line out, you know, where you can't get a good hook set or you don't have not enough where you're constantly pulling your float. So let me show you how I like to control my line with the spinning reel. So I'm gonna cast out here again, okay? Now as my float, I'm gonna throw downstream of us just a little bit as an example here. So as my float's floating down away from me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow my rod tip down until I'm almost pointing at my bobber, okay? Now I'm running out of line. By lowering my rod tip, I'm feeding the bobber line. Now I'm almost pointing at the bobber. I'm gonna open the bale, give the rod a pull back, and close the bale. And then I'm gonna follow my rod back down. Okay, I'm watching my line. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. My bobber's riding nice and smooth. I'm almost pointing at my bobber here. I'm feeding it line by lowering my rod. I'm gonna open the bale again, pull it back, and close the bale. Now, the reason why I like to do this is because my bales close more, which will allow me to get a faster hook set, okay? Now, once you get downstream and your bobber gets way down there, a lot of times you'll have to reel as you're setting the hook. So right now my float's way down below me. So say if it goes down, way the heck down there, I'm gonna reel as I set the hook a couple times and I'm gonna keep reeling, okay? So it's really important, guys, when you go to set that hook, whether your bobber's right out from you, whether it's way down, whether you're fishing a center pin, bait caster, you know, spinning reel, when you set that hook, getting a good hook set's really important. You wanna reel as fast as you can as soon as you set that hook because what'll happen a lot of times is if you don't reel, you'll have a good leader line, so say six, eight feet from your bobber to your hook. 
Now if you set the hook and don't reel, what'll happen is that fish will feel that hook set and he'll be up at the top of the water ready to jump. And there'll be six, eight feet of slack line out and I've seen it many times while guiding. Guys will set the hook and they won't reel and the fish will just come up jumping, head shake, there'll be all kinds of slack line and it'll get off and they won't even know what happened. So what you wanna do is, is when you set that hook, you wanna just start reeling until you see where your bait's at. You know, reel so you pull back on your bobber a little bit, then you can either continue your drift or reel back in and throw back out. So let me show you again here, guys. I'm gonna keep my rod up high, give it a nice cast out, okay? I'm gonna mend the line. I pick the line up, I watch the line pick up off the water all the way to the bobber, and I bring it laid on the other side, okay? Now I'm keep going. I'm gonna open the bale here, give the rod a pull back, mend the line. And when you, after you open the bale, that's a great time to mend the line. After you open the bale, give it line. Right when you shut it, mend the line. And you wanna repeat that process all the way down through the, through the hole. So I'm gonna open the bale again, close it. I don't need to mend the line right now. I'm gonna follow it down, I'm following it down, follow my rod tip down, open the bale, close it again, mend the line right there. Okay, now watch this guys. I'm getting down their ways. I'm gonna open the bale, follow it back down. Okay, now it can be tricky, like I said. Keep, always keep your hand on the bale and on your reel. Because as I get down here a ways, if my bobber goes down and I got a little bit of slack line out, you want to reel as you're setting the hook and start keep reeling. Be aggressive with it, set a good hook. Getting a good hook set, whether it doesn't matter what kind of rod and reel setup you're using, is very important. Set that hook hard, reel, mend the line like we showed you, and control the line like we showed you, and you're gonna have a lot of success on the stream for steelhead fishing. Guys, thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two. If you did, please like the video. It would help our channel out a lot, and we appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment, and we'll get back with you and answer any questions. So, we'll see you next week in our next video, and good luck on the water.